Okay, last bit of stats revision before we go on to something new next time. Um, so we looked at uh, mean and standard deviation last video um, and skipped over linear interpolation. So let's quickly revise that now. Um, I've got a set of data here with 60 values. Okay, now um, normally with a list of numbers, if you want to know where's the median, um, you would normally use n plus 1 over 2. Hopefully that's something you've done before. So with seven values to work out which one's the median, you would do 7 plus 1 divided by 2. The fourth value is the median. That doesn't mean 4 is the median. It means the fourth value is the median. Uh, and so that's what we could do here with 60 values. 60 plus 1 divided by 2 is 30.5. So we know we're between the 30th and the 31st person. However, with a large number of values, I've always sort of used 50 as the sort of cutoff, but the large number of values, the difference between the 30th and the 31st and the 30.5th value, there's barely going to be any difference at all. And we're only estimating anyway because we've got group data. We don't know the actual values. So most of the time, we just will say, OK, let's divide the data into two. So we're looking for the 30th value. Now, if you do between the 30th and the 31st, that's fine. You know, the mark scheme will allow for either. Um, but I'm going to say, right, OK, 60 values, the median, half of that is 30. I'm looking for the 30th value. So this is about cumulative frequency, isn't it? By the time I get to 150 centimetres, I've counted seven people. By the time I get to 160, I've counted 17 people. Uh, 10 plus 7. And by the time I get to 170, I've counted 32 people. So my 30th person is somewhere in this group here. Somewhere in this group here. So I need to work out how far into that group that person is. Now, at the end of the previous group, I've counted 17 people. So I need to go 13 people into this group. There are 15 people into the group. So the fraction I need to go into it is 13 out of 50. 15, sorry, 13 out of 15. The group is 10 wide. So that's how far into that group I need to go. I need to go 13 out of 15 people and it's 10 wide. And that group starts at 160. So my estimate for the median is going to be 160 plus 13 over 15 times 10. And remember, if you'd used n plus 1 over 2 to find the median, you would have just done 160 plus 13.5 over 15 times 10, which is just as fine. OK, I'm only using 13 because A, it's a bit easier and B, it barely makes any difference. So I'm going to work that one out. And I've got uh, 160, which was the end of the previous group. Plus, and this is how far into this next group I need to go, 13 out of 15. 13 people is how far you have to go to get to the 30th, the one I'm after, and there were 15 people in the group altogether, times 10, which is the width of that group. So my estimate for the median is, well, three sig figs, I'm going to round that to 169. So that illustrates that, you know, it doesn't really matter whether you use 13 or 13.5. 169 centimetres. Quick uh, sensibleness, sensibleness check. Yeah, we've gone from 140 to 200, so a median of 169 seems sensible. So uh, in that uh, Math Genie thing we worked on, or you can just pause the video at this point, see if you can estimate the median for this second set of data. OK, so my first question is, where's the median? 50 values. So I'm looking for the 25th value. You could say strictly we're looking for 25.5, halfway between the 25th and the 26th. So I do my cumulative frequencies here. By the time I get to 10 minutes, I've counted 10 people. By the time I get to 15 minutes, I've counted 29 people. So the median is somewhere in this group. I'm looking for the 25th person, so I need another 15 people after that group 
and that group has got 19 people in it. So that's the fraction of the group I need to go through, 15 out of 19, and the group is 5 wide. So to work out the median, it's 10, the end of the previous group, plus that fraction of the second group, and that gives me 13.9. Well done if you got that. Finally, um, referring back to the last video where we found the mean of standard deviation for a set of data, um, well and amazing for realising that um, they can prevent you from using the calculator or the statistics function anywhere on your calculator by just giving you the summary statistics rather than the actual numbers themselves. So they could just say there's a set of data where sigma x is 60 and sigma x squared is 816 and n is 5. So we've got five values that add up to 60 and if you square all five values and add them together you get 816. In that case you would be expected to remember the formula for mean and standard deviation and you'd have to actually just plug the numbers in the old-fashioned way. It um, might be just worth trying, um, trying that. Remember, standard deviation, uh, mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. And those are the answers that you should get. This is exact. This is a rounded answer. Good stuff.